Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. Today I'll be teaching how to make a cozy wrap sweater. I've done many wrap tops before, but never a sweater. Until now, that is. For this one, we went with our favorite stitch, the Suzette, a double slip border, and all slip bottom band for a cinch. All in all, I'm liking the wrap sweater situation. Speaking of, if you like wrap sweaters, tops, or all other things crochet, you are in the right place. We have hundreds of modern crochet designs and patterns, including new patterns weekly, so consider clicking the bell to subscribe and you'll never miss an upload. Also, do me a huge favor and give this video a big thumbs up if you like it, or two thumbs down if you don't. Either way, it's a great way to show support so I can keep putting out free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Now, it's time to get on the show, so without further ado, for this project, any category 4 yarn will work, but I used a total of 600 grams of yarn, and that's 950 yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a 6mm hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order, and enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us your favorite form of exercise. We just recently grabbed a treadmill so I can walk all day, and I've really been enjoying that details for the giveaway down below. We're using four stitches for this project and they'll be as follows. Chain, slip stitch, single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet. This tutorial is for size small, but you can adjust it for your size and we explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting this top started, we're all going to grab our category 4 yarn and make a slip knot. Next, we're going to grab our 6mm hook, and now for every size, we're all going to start with a chain 1. Right after that chain 1, we're going to block off that chain and do a chain 2. There's 1, there's 2. Now that chain two does not count as a stitch, that's our turning chain. And now into that chain that we blocked off, or the third chain from our hook, we're going to do an increase of three half double crochets. So yarn over, insert your hook in through that first chain, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through three. There's one half double crochet, we have two more left into that same chain. So yarn over again, into that same chain, Insert, pull through, yarn over, pull through three, and once more, yarn over, insert your hook into that chain, pull through, and pull through three. Now we should all have a total of one, two, three half double crochets into that first chain. Now let's get started on row two. So to start off every even number row, we're going to chain one and flip our work. Now we're going to start every even number row with a Suzette stitch into the last stitch from our previous row. And a Suzette stitch is just a single and a double crochet into the same stitch. So into that last stitch from our previous row, insert your hook, yarn over pull through, yarn over pull through two, and now we're going to do a double crochet into the same stitch. So yarn over, into that same first stitch, yarn over, pull through, Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. From here, we should have two stitches left. So we're going to skip that following stitch, and then into the last stitch from our previous row, we're all going to do an increase. So after every Suzette stitch set, we always skip the following stitch because that double crochet actually counts as that stitch. If we work directly into that following stitch, we'll be accidentally increasing. So we're going to skip one, into that following stitch, which should be the last one from our previous row, we're going to do an increase of three. But it's going to be two half double crochets and then one double crochet all into that same last stitch. So start with a yarn over, into the last stitch, insert your hook with a half double crochet, insert your hook into that same last stitch with a second half double crochet, and then into that same last stitch, 
with a double crochet. Now just as a fun fact, for every increased side that we have, the outside stitch needs to be a double crochet because if we just do all half double crochets, our work will start to curve. And we want this edge to be as straight as possible. Now that our row two is finished, let's all get started on a row three. So chain three and flip our work. Now that chain three does not count as a stitch. We just need the height because we're going to start off every odd number row with a double crochet as well. So yarn over into the last stitch from a previous row with a double crochet. And starting every odd number row, we're going to start with an increase of four. So there's our first stitch. Now we're going to be doing three half double crochets into that same stitch. So here's one double crochet. Here is one half double crochet. Here is two half double crochets. And then three half double crochets. So all together into that first stitch, we should have one, two, three, four stitches. Right after that increase, we're going to do our Suzette stitch. So right after the increase, we are going to be skipping that following stitch and into the stitch right after that, a single and double crochet into the same stitch. So insert with a single and then into that same stitch with a double crochet. Now at the end of every odd number row, we're going to close it with just one half double crochet because we need this bottom to be blunt. So we're going to yarn over, skip that following stitch and into the last stitch from our previous row, insert with one half double crochet. And that is our row three. Let's get started on our row four. So getting started on every even number row, we're going to chain one and flip our work. So just as a refresher, we're going to insert our hook into the last stitch from our previous row, starting with our Suzette stitch. So just a single and also a double crochet into that same first stitch. Remember after every Suzette stitch set, we're going to skip that following stitch and into the stitch right after another Suzette stitch set. So single and double. And for row four, we have one more Suzette stitch set. So we're going to skip one into the following, a single and a double into that same stitch. And after we have one, two, three Suzette stitch sets, we should all have two stitches left. Now into that last stitch from our previous row, we're going to do an increase of three. So two half double crochets and then a double crochet for the last stitch. So yarn over, skip that following stitch and into that last stitch, a half double, a second half double into that same stitch and now a double crochet. Now our row four is finished. Let's just get started on our row five, then it's going to be a repeat of rows four and five. Now getting started on every odd number row, we're going to start with a chain three and flip our work. Since we are along the increase end, every odd number row is going to start with an increase of four. So one double crochet and three half double crochets into that first stitch. So yarn over into the last stitch from our previous row with a double crochet and then three more into that same stitch. There's one, there's two, and three half double crochets. Now from here, we're going to do our Suzette stitch until we have two stitches left. So after that increase, we're going to skip the following stitch into the stitch right after with a single and double. And again, skip a stitch into the following with a single and a double. And we're going to continue this until we have two stitches left. And just as a really quick tip, each of our Suzette stitch sets should be worked into our previous rows single crochet. So right after we finish that last set, we're going to skip that following stitch. We can tell that that's a double crochet because it's a little bit taller. And then into the stitch right after, we're going to do our Suzette stitch set, which we should know should be a single crochet because it's a little bit shorter. So insert with a single and a double crochet. 
Now for our row five, we should have our increase with one, two, three Suzette stitch sets and two stitches left. So we're just going to half double crochet into the last stitch from our previous row. And from here, it's going to be a repeat of our two previous rows. So every even number row is going to be a Suzette stitch set that ends with an increase of three. So two half double and one double crochet into that last stitch. And then every odd number row is gonna start with an increase of four. So one double crochet and three half double crochets into that first stitch. Suzette stitch all the way down and close the row off with a half double crochet. I'm gonna continue to repeat those two rows until we have a front panel portion that we like. Now, just as an example, I have one of my front panels nearly finished. Since this is going to be a wrap top, we're all gonna to start by placing the point of our piece where we want our front panel to wrap over, but keeping in mind we will have a front band as well. So I'm gonna place this just about one inch past mid chest, and I'm going to have the increase side or this slant work my way across my chest over to the other side of the base of my neck. And we wanna make sure that this height can reach all the way up to the top of our shoulder making sure that the blunt end that we have right here stays underneath our bust. And when we have that, I will meet you guys back along the top end so we can get started on our shoulder portion. Now I'm actually already finished with one increase portion for my front panel. I have a total of 20 rows. My width is just about seven and a half inches or 19 centimeters. And my height that I have is just about 13 inches or 33 centimeters. And now from here, we're just going to do our Suzette stitch rows with no more increases or decreases until we have a shoulder portion that can reach about two inches past the tip of our shoulder. So since we all should have ended along the top, we're all going to chain one and flip our work. So getting started on our shoulder portion, our following row, so our next odd number row, is just gonna start with a Suzette stitch set where we would normally do an increase. We're all gonna start by inserting our hook into that last stitch from our previous row with just a single and a double crochet into that same stitch. And also make sure that we're inserting a stitch marker into the edge of this row just so we know where the blunt portion of our front panel is starting. And from here, continue with our Suzette stitch sets. So we're going to skip one stitch into the following, insert with a single and double, skip one stitch into the following with another single and double and continue this until we have two stitches left. So we've made our way all the way down with our first shoulder row and we should all have one, two stitches left. Into that last stitch from our previous row, we're gonna insert with a half double crochet and that is that. From here, we're gonna continue to repeat this row until we get a shoulder portion that can now reach about two inches past the tip of our shoulder. When we have that, do a chain up a one and cut, and then I will meet you back. So the entirety of my front panel's finished. I have a total of 30 rows. My shoulder width that I just did with you is four inches or 10 centimeters, or my total width is 11 inches or 28 centimeters. Right after we reached our last row, I did do a chain up a one and cut, and when we have one of these front panels finished, we will be making a second panel that is exactly the same. And when we have both of these finished, I will meet you back so we can get started on our back panel. So now that we have both of our front panels finished, let's get started with the back. So getting started with the back panel, we're all going to grab our category four yarn and make a slip knot. Then we're all going to grab our six millimeter hook and start off by making an odd number chain that reaches from two inches past the tip of our shoulder, across our back, over to two inches past the tip of our other shoulder. So I'm gonna make a chain 63, and that's 15 and a half inches or 39 centimeters. And I actually already have the width of my back panel finished, so I'm just gonna be doing a sample size with you. Now that we have our chain, we're gonna get started with our Suzette stitch row. So block off that last chain and do a chain one. Into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook, we're gonna insert with our first Suzette stitch set. So a single crochet and a double crochet. So bring your hook down into that chain, starting with a single crochet, and then also into that same chain, a double crochet. 
After the set, we are going to skip that following stitch and into the one right after that, another single and double crochet. And that is it. We're gonna continue to do our Suzette stitch sets until we have two chains left. So our row one is nearly finished. We should all have one, two chains left, and into that last chain, we're gonna insert with one half double crochet to keep this edge blunt. So yarn over, skip that following stitch, and into the last stitch, insert with one half double crochet. And that is our row one. From here, we're gonna to continue to repeat this row. So just as a refresher, we're gonna chain one, flip our work, and insert into that first stitch, which should be the top of that half double crochet with our first Suzette stitch set. So a single crochet and a double. Skip that following stitch and into the stitch right after, another single and a double. And continue this until we have two stitches left. When we have those two, put one half double crochet into the last stitch from our previous row to keep it blunt. Now we're going to continue to repeat that Suzette stitch row with no increases and no decreases until we have the same amount of rows as stitches that we have for our last row for our front panel, but minus five because we are gonna have to do a little neckline along the back. So for those of you that have my numbers, I have a total of 41 stitches for my last row for my front panel. They should be the same for both of our front panels since they both are a repeat. So I'm gonna continue to repeat our row two that we just did together until I have a total of 36 rows. And then I will meet you back so we can get started on the neckline for the back panel. So I am back with the first portion of my back panel. I have a total of 36 rows. And now from here, we're going to insert our stitch markers into three spots and then we can get started on the neckline for the back. So the first stitch marker that we're going to insert is going to be our middle stitch stitch marker. We should all have just one middle stitch since we should all have a total of odd number of stitches. And we just wanna indicate where the middle is so that once we work in our front fan, it'll be easier to find. So for those of you that have my numbers, I've inserted my stitch marker into the 34th stitch from the edge, and that is my middle stitch. And the other two stitch markers that we're going to have to insert are going to be the same amount of stitches as shoulder rows that we have for the front panel. So just as an example, since we inserted our stitch marker into that first shoulder row that we have for the front panel, we're going to count out the same amount of side rows that we have, and then insert our stitch marker into the same amount of stitches. So just to count mine out with you, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And so from the edges, I've inserted my stitch marker into the 10th stitch. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. We did that along both sides, and now we can get started on this shoulder portion. So from where we're at, let's all chain one and flip our work. So to get started on the shoulder portion for our back panel, we're going to do our Suzette stitches until we reach our stitch marker stitch. And just as a really quick tip, the last Suzette stitch set that we have is going to be worked into that stitch that is right before our stitch marker stitch. So just to do the first one, we're gonna insert our hook into that first stitch with a single and a double. Skip a stitch into the next with a single and a double. And I will meet you back when we reach our stitch marker. And now that we've done our Suzette stitches until we have reached our stitch marker, into that stitch marker stitch, we're just gonna insert with a half double crochet. So yarn over, into that stitch marker stitch, which should just be the following stitch, insert with one half double crochet. And just as a really quick tip, the amount of stitches that we have for this first shoulder row that we have is going to be one more than the amount of side rows that we have for the shoulder portion. The numbers and the stitches just so happen to work out that way, but that's completely fine. Once we seam it, you won't be able to notice. But from here, we're gonna to continue to repeat our regular Suzette stitch row with no increases and no decreases for a total of five rows, because remember, we left a total of five rows out so that we can work on the shoulder portion. So here's my first. Let's just get started with our second shoulder row for the back panel. So chain one and flip our work. And now that our work is flipped, just insert your hook into that first stitch with a single and double, and that's it. We're just gonna continue to repeat this row with no increases and no decreases until, like I said, we have a total of five of these shoulder rows. 
When we do, do a chain up of one and cut. So I have just finished up my additional five rows for my back panel's neckline. And now we're going to do the same thing we did here along the other side. So just as a really quick refresher, I now have a total of 41 rows, which are the same amount of stitches as my last row for my front panel. And my total height is 15 inches or 38 centimeters. Now a really quick sizing tip, the total height that we have for the back panel is going to be a little bit longer than the front panel pieces that we have. Now it depends on your tension. It could be anywhere from a half an inch to two inches, but it'll all even out once we single crochet along the edges and seam it all together. So getting started on the second shoulder portion for our back panel, we're going to insert our hook into the stitch marker stitch that we have and we're going to work out towards the edge. So insert your yarn onto your hook, pull through and chain one. This chain one doesn't count as a stitch. And just so that we have the same amount of sets as this shoulder portion over here, we're going to do our first Suzette stitch set into that same stitch that our chain one is in or our stitch marker stitch. So into that same stitch, we're going to insert with one single and one double crochet. And we're also going to be doing our following Suzette stitch set into the stitch right after. So we're going to have one right after another. So here's my first set into the following with a single and a double. And then we're going to do our Suzette stitches per usual. So skip a stitch into the stitch right after a single and a double. Again, skip a stitch into the one right after a single and a double. And once more for me, skip a stitch, a single and a double. And if you have more stitches, continue to do this until you have one, two stitches left. And since we need this to be blunt, we're just going to half double crochet into the last stitch from our previous row. So skip that second to last and into the last insert with one half double crochet. And just to double check my work with you, my finished shoulder portion for the back panel, I have one, two, three, four, five sets. And just to make sure I have the same amount of sets here, I have one, two, three, four, five sets here. From here, we're just going to continue to do our Suzette stitch row with no increases and no decreases until we have a total of five of these shoulder rows. When we do, do a chain of one and cut. So I have just finished up my other shoulder portion for my back panel. I did do a chain up of one and cut. And now before we get started with seaming everything together, we're going to single crochet along the edges of our back panel just to make that seaming a little bit easier. So let's all start by inserting our hook into the bottom corner stitch of the back panel. Then we're going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, and then do a chain up of one to secure. And now from here, we're going to be putting just one single crochet into every side row. So let's do the first view. This is my first side row that I have right here. I'm going to find that top loop and insert my hook. Now, if you're like me, you should have some tail ends. So go ahead, just place your tail ends over your hook so that you don't need to weave in those ends later. And we're just going to single crochet around everything. Let's do this again. Into your following side row. This is mine right here. Find that top loop with one single crochet and that's it. We're going to continue to put one single crochet into every side row. And as a quick tip, we should have the same amount of stitches as the last row that we have for our front panel. When we have that, do a chain up one and cut and then repeat on the other side. I am back and we have just finished up the single crochet row along the edges of our back panel. I did do a chain up one and cut and now we're going to seam the shoulders together. So let's all start by placing our front panel on top of our back panel, making sure that the long end for the front panel is along the outside and the slant is along the inside. We are now going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through and do a chain up of one to secure. Now from here, we're going to be single crocheting, combining our front and back panel at the same time. So into the top of the front panels, we should have a bunch of side rows and into the top of our back panel, we should have a bunch of stitches. 
So just like how we single crocheted along the edge of our back panel, it's going to be one single crochet into every side row within the front panel, and also one single crochet into every stitch within the back panel, so pretty simple. Let's all start by finding our first side row within the front panel. This is mine right here. I'm going to find that top loop, insert my hook. I'm then gonna find that first stitch into the back panel that I have. This is mine right here. Insert in through that stitch, and we're gonna single crochet, but if you'd like to weave in your tail ends as you go, place all of your tail ends over your hook and single crochet once. Let's do this again. We're gonna find that next available side row into the front panel, insert in through that top loop. We're then gonna find that next stitch within the back panel, insert in through that top loop, and single crochet. That's basically it, let's do this just once more. Into the next side row within the front panel, insert in through that top loop, into that next stitch within the back panel, insert in through that stitch, and single crochet, and that is it. We're gonna continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut, and then repeat on the other side. So now that our shoulders are all seamed together, we're actually gonna get started on the front band. And if you're looking at it, and if it looks a little big, don't worry about it, because it'll all cinch up together once we go in with the single crochet along the bottom and with the side seam. So getting started on our front band, we're all gonna have to do a single crochet row along the neckline. So let's all start by flipping our work right side out, meaning the seams that we just did for the shoulders are along the inside. And then we're gonna insert our hook into the bottom corner stitch of one of our front panels. We are then going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, and do a chain up of one to secure. Now working our way up our front panel, we're gonna be putting two single crochets into every side row. So let's all start by finding our first. This is my first side row right here. I'm gonna find that top loop and insert my hook with two single crochets. So there is one, and then into that same top loop with a second single crochet. Let's do that again. This is my following side row. I'm gonna insert into there with one, and then into that same top loop with two single crochets, and that is that. We're gonna continue doing this, making our way all the way up until we reach our back panel. So we've just single crocheted our way up our front panel. We are now at our back panel, and all we're gonna do from here, since we should have five side rows is put one single crochet into every side row and then working across our back put one single crochet into every stitch and then we're going to work our way back down to the front panel and once we reach the other front panel's corner do a chain up one and cut i just wanted to meet you guys back to mention that once we reach our stitch marker stitch along the back make sure that we're inserting it into the stitch that's worked into that stitch so we still know where the middle is i'll meet you back when this single crochet row is finished so our single crochet row, making our way all the way up and around our front and back panel, are all finished. Now we're gonna get started on one of our front bands. So let's all make sure that our work is still flipped right side out, right side up, and we're going to be looking at the front panel along the left side. So taking a look at our left front panel, we're all going to insert our hook into the bottom corner stitch. We're all gonna start by inserting our yarn onto our hook, pull through, and we're now going to make a chain the length that we'd like for our front band to be. I'd like for mine to be just about an inch and a half, or four centimeters, so I'm gonna start by making a chain seven. Now working along the front panel portion first, we're going to do a double crochet row that starts with a decrease and ends with an increase. So block off that last chain and do a chain three. That chain three does not count as a stitch. That's our turning chain. And we're all gonna yarn over, preparing for a decrease of two double crochets. We're gonna insert our hook into that chain that we blocked off, or the fourth chain from our hook. So insert your hook, yarn over, and pull through. Also insert your hook into that following chain, yarn over, pull through. And when we have those four loops on our hook, we're gonna yarn over, pull through the first three, Yarn over, pull through two. 
that is our decrease of two double crochets. And from here, put one double crochet into every chain, leaving the last one. Now that we should all have just one chain left, into that last chain, we're going to do an increase of two double crochets. So into that last chain, insert with one double crochet, and then into that same chain with a second double crochet. And now that we have our first row, we're gonna to need to connect it into the base. So connecting it into the base, we're all gonna start by counting up one, two stitches. Into that second stitch, we are going to slip stitch into there to close off this first row. Just like that. And now to work our way up to the following row, which is going to be a back loop slip stitch row, we're going to slip stitch into that next available stitch into the base. And now we're going to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. So those two slip stitches into the base does not count as a stitch. We're gonna start by finding the last stitch from our previous row and insert into that back loop, yarn over and gently pull through everything. Let's do this again. Into that following stitch, insert into that back loop, yarn over and pull through everything. And we do wanna make sure that we're gently pulling through after every stitch because if we pull too tightly, the following stitches could be too tight to work into. And continue putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And as a quick tip, we should have the same amount of stitches as chains that we made. And now that my row two is finished, let's get started on our row three. For the front band, we're gonna alternate between a back loop double crochet row and a back loop slip stitch row. So every odd number row, we're gonna start it with a chain three and flip our work. And now we're always gonna start with a decrease of two back loop double crochets and then end it with an increase of two back loop double crochets. So we're all gonna yarn over and insert our hook into that last stitch from our previous row, into that back loop, pull through. Into that following stitches back loop, insert, pull through, then yarn over, pull through three, yarn over, pull through two, and put one back loop double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last one. Now our row three is nearly finished. We should all have one stitch left, and into that last stitch, we're going to do an increase of two back loop double crochets. So yarn over. Insert your hook into that last stitch's back loop with one double crochet, and then into that same back loop with your second double crochet. And now from here, we're gonna connect it into the base. So start by counting up the next two available stitches. There's one, there's two, slip stitch into that second stitch. And then just to work our way up to the following row, which is a back loop slip stitch row, slip stitch into that next stitch into the base. Those two slip stitches into the base don't count as a stitch. Flip our work and put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, and that is it. We're gonna continue doing this, making our way up our front panel until we reach our shoulder seam. Now for this portion, since everyone should have a different amount of stitches, we're just going to eyeball this portion together. So we're gonna to continue to repeat these two rows until we're roughly where our shoulder seam is, and then I will meet you back right after a back loop slip stitch row so they can work across the back. So I am back with my back loop double and back loop slip stitch rows all the way up until I reach my shoulder seam. Now this is gonna be a little bit different for everyone, even though we all should have ended right after a back loop slip stitch row, we may end right at the shoulder seam, maybe a stitch or two before or a stitch or two after, just as long as we're in this area. And everyone's numbers are gonna be a little bit different depending on how many rows that they actually have. But none of that really matters because once when we get here, we're gonna continue on with our back loop double crochet row and back loop slip stitch row, but now without any of the increases or decreases. So we're just gonna continue on until we reach our stitch marker stitch along the back. So from here, all we're gonna do is chain three and flip our work. And all we're gonna do is put one back loop double crochet into every stitch. And then we're gonna connect it into the base the same way that we just did. Then we're going to do a back loop slip stitch row and continue on repeating those two rows with no increases and no decreases until we reach our stitch marker stitch along the back. Once we do, do a chain up of one and cut. So I've made my way all the way up until I have reached my stitch marker stitch within the back. I am worked into that stitch and I did do a chain up of one and cut. 
And now we're going to repeat our front band along this side. But since the ribbing that we have isn't reversible, it's gonna be done a little bit differently, but generally the same idea. So how we're going to start the right side is by inserting our hook into the bottom corner stitch of the right side. Insert your yarn onto your hook, pull through, and we're all gonna start by making a chain for the same amount of chains that we made for the first front band. So I made a chain of seven for that one. So on this side, I'm going to make a chain seven. Now, right after that chain, we're actually just going to do a chain up of one and cut. That last chain obviously doesn't count as our base chain. And then from here, we're gonna insert our hook into the base. So into the base from the point, we're going to count up one, two stitches and insert our hook into that second stitch. We're then going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, and we're gonna start by putting an increase of two double crochets into that first chain. So we're going to yarn over, insert your hook in through that first chain, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and one more double crochet into that same first chain. So insert, pull through, pull through two, pull through two, and now we're going to put one double crochet into every chain, leaving the last two. And now that we've put one double crochet into every chain, we should have one, two left. So now we're going to finish off the row with a decrease of two double crochets. So yarn over into that second to last chain, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, and then insert your hook into that last chain from our previous row, Yarn over, pull through. We should have a total of four loops on our hook, so yarn over, pull through three, yarn over, pull through two. And our falling row is going to be a back loop slip stitch row, so chain one, flip our work, and put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. Now that we're back at the base, we're going to slip stitch it into the base. So the way that we're gonna slip stitch it into the base is right after our slip stitch row, we're gonna find that next available stitch, insert your hook in through that stitch to connect the slip stitch row. Next, we're gonna slip stitch up the following two stitches into the base. So there is my first slip stitch. There is my second slip stitch. And we need those two slip stitches because we need the height for the double crochet row and we're gonna flip our work. And then from here, we're going to repeat, but within the back loops. So just to get started on our third row, yarn over, find the last stitch from our previous row, insert your hook into that back loop with an increase of two back loop double crochets. So there's one, two double crochets into that first back loop, and then one back loop double crochet into every stitch until we have two left, then do a decrease of two back loop double crochets, then a slip stitch row. We're gonna to continue to repeat these two rows until we reach our shoulder seam. And we should have the same amount of rows that we had for the other side. Then right after that, we're going to continue on with our row sequence of back loop slip stitches and back loop double crochets, but without any increases or decreases working across the back. So pretty much the same idea that we did for the other side. Once on our last row is worked into that stitch marker stitch, do not do a chain up of one and cut because then I will meet you back so we can seam everything together. So now that I have made my way all the way up with my back loop double and back loop slip stitch rows, and I have worked into that stitch marker stitch, let's seam it all together. So let's flip our work over, making sure that our work is flipped right side out, but we're looking at the back. Now we're going to be doing an outside loop slip stitch seam. So let's all start by finding that first stitch into the front panel and insert only in through that front loop. Then find that next stitch into the back panel, insert only in through that back loop, then yarn over and pull through everything on our hook. Let's do this again. Into the next stitch, into the front panel, insert in through that front loop, then into the back, insert only in through that back loop, yarn over, pull through everything, and continue this until we don't have any more stitches left, then do a chain up of one and cut. So now that we have finished seaming our front band, we're now going to single crochet along the bottom to shrink it up 
but also to combine our front and back panel together. I know we're doing this a little out of order. We would typically be going in with the sides right now, but once we have the bottom all cinched up, going in with the sleeve size and figuring out that would be a lot easier. So we're all gonna make sure that our work is slipped right side out, right side up, and then we're going to be inserting our hook into the bottom corner stitch of our front panel. We're then going to place our yarn onto our hook, pull through and do a chain up of one to secure. Now since we're working along the front panel, so we have a bunch of side rows to work into, we're gonna be doing a decrease of two single crochets into every two side rows. So as an example, we're all gonna find our first side row. This is mine right here. We're going to insert into that top loop, pull through, find our following side row, so it's this gap for me, insert, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. That is our decrease of two single crochets. Let's do that again. Into my following side row, I'm gonna insert into that top loop, pull through, into my following side row, insert into that one's top loop, pull through, pull through all three. And we're gonna continue with this until we reach our band. When we do, we're just gonna put one single crochet into every stitch. And when we don't have any more stitches left to work into, do a chain up a one and cut, and then repeat on the other side. So I am back and I have just finished up single crocheting along the bottom of my front panels. Now we're gonna do the same thing along the back. So let's take a look at the back panel. So we're all gonna start by inserting our hook into the bottom corner stitch of the front panel. Insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure. And now we're gonna do a decrease of two single crochets into every stitch. So start by finding our first stitch that we have right here. Insert, yarn over, pull through. Also insert your hook into that following stitch. And if you're like me, you don't wanna weave in your tail ends. So go ahead and place your tail ends over your hook. Pull through for a total of three loops on our hook, then pull through all three. Now from here, we're gonna continue to do this, making our way all the way down. And when we don't have any more stitches left to work into, we're all gonna do a chain up of one and cut. So our single crochet row along the bottom of the back panel is all finished. Now we're gonna get started on the wrap portion and then we're gonna single crochet everything together. So first things first, we're all going to insert our stitch markers into the point where we want our wraps to meet. So what I mean by that is this is where the new point of our wrap is going to be. So I want my wrap to have a three inch overlap. So I've inserted my stitch into the 10th stitch from the edge along both sides. And when we have our stitch markers into place, our stitch markers are going to be on top of one another, just like that. So that's gonna be how my wrap looks. Now, right before we get started on our following single crochet row, we just wanna make sure that this wrap is going to fit on us. So what I mean by that is we're going to try on our piece. When we try on our piece, we're going to pinch the corner stitch of the front and the back panel together on both ends, and also make sure that the wrap having the stitch marker on top of each other can fit around you. Now, if it's a little too tight, place your stitch marker a little bit further out towards the edge. Or if it's a little too loose, you can place your stitch marker further into the front panel going towards the back panel. But once we have that, we can get started on the single crochet row. So first things first, we're just going to place our two stitch markers on top of each other. And what we're going to do from here is into the front top panel, we're gonna count out for the same amount of stitches that we inserted our stitch marker into working towards the back. So I'm going to grab a second stitch marker color and I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I'm gonna insert my stitch marker into that 10th stitch and also into that first stitch from my bottom front panel and that's going to be how our overlap is going to look. And we're actually going to be doing the same thing on the other side as well. So now taking a look at the back panel, counting from our following stitch, I'm gonna count 10 because I inserted my stitch marker into the 10th stitch. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and I'm going to insert my stitch marker into the corner stitch of the front panel and also into that tenth stitch. Just like that, and we have just established where our piece is going to wrap over. Now getting started on this single crochet row, we're going to insert our hook into the corner stitch of the back panel and also into the corner stitch of the front panel. 
we are going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through everything, and then do a chain up of one to secure. And now from here, we're going to be putting one single crochet into every stitch until we reach our first stitch marker. And now that we're at our stitch marker stitch, we're going to continue on with our single crochet row. But now we're going to be working in through the front front panel and the bottom front panel at the same time to seam it all together. So inserting your hook into that stitch marker stitch within the front panel, we can take out our stitch marker now. And also into the corner stitch of our bottom front panel. And we're going to single crochet everything together. And again, into that next stitch into the front panel into that next stitch into the bottom front panel and single crochet. And that's it. We're going to continue doing this until we reach our following stitch marker stitch. And that is where the wrap is going to be along the side. Once we reach our middle stitch marker stitches right here, we just want to make sure that they are aligned to make sure that nothing shifted while we're doing our single crochet. And I'll meet you back along the other corner of our front panel. Now we have just single crocheted across the top of our front panels, combining both of our front panels that we have, so both the top and the bottom. Now right before we insert our hook into the corner stitch of the back panel, we are going to try this on just to double check and make sure that this fits. I'm only having us double check a couple times throughout the piece because everyone's numbers are going to be a little bit different. And I would like for us to figure out the sizing here rather than getting the bottom band done and then figuring out that we can't actually fit into it. So what we're going to do is we're going to try on our piece. Then we're going to pinch the corner stitch of our front panel and the corner stitch of our back panel just to make sure that the single crochet row that we are doing right now can fit around us. Now, if it's a little too tight, redo some stitches with a looser grip, or if it's a little too tight, redo some stitches with a tighter grip. But once we are sure that this can fit around us once when we're wearing it, we are then going to single crochet into the corner stitch of the back panel. And now our front and back panels are connected. Now working along our back, just put one single crochet into every stitch. And once we made our way all the way around, slip stitch into that chain space, and then I will meet you back. So now that our single crochet row is finished and everything fits, we're now going to get started on the length of our bottom band. Now from here, you can make your bottom band as long or as short as you'd like. So feel free to make this full length or cropped. Mine will be cropped. So right after that slip stitch into that chain space, I'm going to make a chain 10. And that's just about two inches or five centimeters. And now that we have our chain, we're going to block off that last chain and do a chain one. Now that chain one doesn't count as a stitch. That's our turning chain. And now we're going to slip stitch into that chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook. So insert and pull through everything on our hook. Let's do that again. Into that next chain, insert your hook. Yarn over and gently pull through everything and continue with one slip stitch into every chain. And now that we put one slip stitch into every chain, we're now gonna connect it into the base. So start by finding that next stitch into the base Insert your hook, yarn over, and pull through everything. And for these slip stitches into the base, make sure that we're not tugging too tightly after every stitch again, because we don't want the bottom band to be too tight once we wear it. Now to work our way up to the falling row, slip stitch into that next stitch into the base. Those two slip stitches into the base don't count as a stitch, and we're gonna flip our work. And from here, we're gonna find that last stitch from our previous row, Insert into that back loop and put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch and that is it. At the end of the row, we're going to chain one, flip our work, and put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch again. And that's it. We're going to continue to repeat these two rows with no increases and no decreases, connecting it into the base the same way that we just did. When we've made our way all the way around and don't have any more stitches left to work into into the base, I'll meet you back to seam everything together. So now that we have made our way all the way around with our back loop slip stitch rows, we're now going to seam it. And this seam is going to be the same seam that we did for the front band. So let's all make sure that our work is flipped right side out. Then we're gonna insert our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Then we're going to yarn over, pull through everything on our hook, and let's just do the first seam together. We're all gonna start by inserting our hook into that first stitch into the front panel's front loop, then into that next stitch into the back panels, back loop, 
yarn over and pull through everything on our hook. And that's it. We're gonna continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut. So now that our bottom band is seamed up, we are now going to seam the sides. So first things first, we're going to flip our work wrong side out, and then we're gonna insert our stitch markers into the stitch where we want our sleeve to start. So we're all gonna make sure that our stitch markers are into a stitch that is in multiples of three. So I've inserted my stitch marker into the 24th stitch from the top, and that's just about eight inches or 20 centimeters. And now we're going to insert our hook into that first stitch that we have within our front and back panel, and then do our seam all the way up till we reach our stitch markers. So we're going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure, and now we're gonna single crochet in through both of our stitches within the front and the back panel. So finding that next stitch into the front panel, insert, next stitch into the back panel, insert, and single crochet. Let's do that again. Into the next stitch into the front panel, next stitch into the back panel, single crochet, and that's it. Continue this until we reach our stitch marker. When we do, do a chain up of one and cut. So we have just finished up seaming both of our sides and now we're ready to get started on the length of our sleeve. So first things first, we're gonna make sure that our work is flipped right side out, right side up, and then we're gonna be inserting our hook into the stitch that we have that's nearest to our side seam. Then we're gonna be making an odd number chain the length that we'd like for our sleeve to be, so you can make this as long or as short as you like. I'd like for mine to be a long sleeve, so I'm gonna start by making a chain of 63, and that's 15 and a half inches or 39 centimeters. Now that we have our chain, we are going to block off that last chain, do a chain one and get started on our first Suzette stitch row. So into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook, insert with our first Suzette stitch set. So a single crochet and a double crochet into that same chain. Right after that set, skip a stitch and into the stitch right after that, another Suzette stitch set, and that is it. We're gonna continue this until we have two stitches left. And now that we've made our way all the way down, we should all have two chains left, and now we're gonna half double crochet into that last chain. So yarn over, into that last chain, insert, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three, and now our row one is complete. Now we're going to connect it into the base. So we're going to skip that first stitch, and into the next stitch, we're going to insert our hook, with a slip stitch to close off this first row. Then to work our way up to the following row, we're going to slip stitch into that next stitch into the base. Those two slip stitches into the base don't count as stitches. Flip our work and then repeat. So we're going to do another Suzette stitch row with no increases and no decreases. And that's pretty much it for the sleeve. We're gonna continue to repeat these two rows. So Suzette stitch rows, like I said, with no increases and no decreases, connecting it into the base the same way that we just did, making our way all the way around. When we don't have any more stitches left to work into, I will meet you back so that we can seam our sleeve together. So I am back and I have just made my way all the way around with my Suzette stitch rows. I don't have any more stitches left to work into into the base, so now we're going to seam it together so let's all start by making sure that our work is flipped wrong side out. So now that our work is flipped wrong side out, we're gonna be inserting our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel, yarn over and pull through everything on our hook. Now this is going to be the same seam that we did for the sides, so getting this started, we're gonna find that first stitch into the front panel, insert our hook, first stitch into the back panel, insert our hook, and single crochet them together. Doing one more into that next stitch into the front panel, next stitch into the back panel and single crochet, and that's it. We're gonna continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut, and I'll meet you back so we can do our cuff. And now that our sleeve is seamed, we're now gonna get started on the cuff. So let's all make sure that our work is now flipped right side out, and then we're gonna be inserting our hook into any one of the side rows that we have along the bottom of our sleeve. We are then going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure, and all we're gonna do here is put one single crochet into every side row. So let's all start by finding our first side row. This is mine right here. We're gonna insert our hook with just one single crochet. Again, this is my following side row. Insert into that top loop with another single crochet. 
and continue with one single crochet into every side row, making our way all the way around. Then slip stitch into that chain space. Now that our single crochet row is finished, we're now going to make a chain the length that we'd like for our cuff to be. I'd like for mine to be just about two and a half inches or six centimeters, so I'm going to start by making a chain eight. And now that we have our chain, we're going to do a slip stitch row. So block off that last chain and do a chain one. Into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook, insert with a slip stitch. So yarn over, pull through everything on our hook. And from here, put one slip stitch into every chain, remembering not to tug too tightly after every stitch. Now that we put one slip stitch into every chain, we're going to connect it into the base. So finding that next available stitch into the base, we're going to insert our hook with a slip stitch. That slip stitch doesn't count as a stitch, that's just to connect it. And we also need to work our way up to the following row. So slip stitch into that next stitch into the base. Flip our work, and now put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. So the cuff is going to be done pretty much the same way as the bottom band. So we're going to continue to do our back loop slip stitch rows with no increases and no decreases until we don't have any more stitches left to work into into the base. Then I will meet you back to seam it all together. So we've just made our way all the way around with our back loop slip stitch rows and now we're going to seam it all together. So first things first, let's make sure that our work is slipped right side out. Then we're going to be inserting our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through everything on our hook. This is going to be the same seam as our bottom band, so just to do the first one, we're going to find that first stitch into the front panel, insert only into that front loop. We're then going to find that first stitch into the back panel, insert into that back loop, yarn over, pull through all three, and that is it. We're going to continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into, and when we don't, do a chain up of one and cut, and then repeat what we did here on the other side. And now that both of our sleeves are all finished up, we are all done. The last thing we're going to have to do is weave in all of our ends. And there you have it. Hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Join us on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. Those links are down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Catch y'all in the next one. Bye.